guys, I'm Cory Oliver. Thanks for watching The Coriolis Effect. Please hit the subscribe button below, and we hope you like this episode. This episode is brought to you by Monster Ivy Publishing. Monster Ivy Publishing is the premier publisher of edgy, clean fiction from a Christian worldview. Co-owners Cami Larson and Mary Gray believe that we can all enjoy more exciting or intense stories without the guilt. Some of Monster Ivy's latest releases include Daphne's Questionable Bet, a romantic comedy about two teens who relive an old rivalry between their moms, and Living Water, a modern-day telling of the New Testament's Woman at the Well, about Roxy who gets married five times. Poor Roxy. <laughs> Monster Ivy specializes in just about every genre, thriller, fantasy, dystopian, middle grade, and horror. This publishing house likes to tackle the hard topics like anxiety, abuse, or divorce while keeping it clean. Their passion is sharing stories of hope and light while subtly bringing readers closer to Christ. To learn more about Monster Ivy Publishing, please visit monsterivy.com. All of their books are available at every major book retailer online. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Corey. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm okay. Oh, no. That was like... Wah, wah, wah. I mean, like... like <laughs> no, I was just... I wanted to... I got a new teleprompter in the studio. I want to tell you, I got that for, for my birthday. Oh, my God. I missed your birthday? <laughs> yes, you did. Oh, my God. <laughs> are you kidding? No. I was waiting to see if you would call. I'm a terrible friend. No, you're a wonderful friend. I am so, okay. Just absent-minded. Happy birthday. No, 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 no. no. Um, you got to wait another 363 days. When was your birthday? Well, 363, so two days ago. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I do apologize. That's okay. You know, and this is not an excuse, but I do, have a, my fault. I do have a best friend to back me up on this. Her and I had downloaded something like two months ago. We downloaded the same thing, and on our our iPhones, it gave us a virus on our calendar. I think I told you about this. So I literally deleted my calendar because it kept coming up on my phone and it kept coming up on her phone. She goes, just delete your calendar. So I said, okay, I'll delete my calendar. So I, if you look at my phone, I don't have a calendar. So my birthday's not in your head? No. Not like yours, September 30th? It, now it is because I've completely... Like your birthday, September 30th, is ingrained in my head? Well, the truth is it's September 29th. I, I'm, damn it, I'm so <laughs> close. Oh, I'm so close. I knew it was at the end of September, and it was either the 29th or the 30th. And, that. Oh, that's so bad. It's so awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. So I will yeah. never forget your birthday again, but I apologize. And you're not the only person that's like, oh, we forgot my birthday, because it usually pops up with a little reminder. But I don't have a calendar, so happy birthday. Thank you. I didn't want anybody to know. I got a few from friends, but I turned my phone off. I, I didn't oh turn it off. Oh, my gosh. I feel I terrible. Just... I'm so sorry. I'm giving you a public apology that I did I'm... not remember your birthday. And thank you so much for calling us out on the air. Just so you know, I'm, not... <laughs> I'm not very big on birthdays. Mine. So I, I just like to get through the day, move on, because I just, you know, well, it reminds me how old I'm. Well, happy old. birthday to you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for starting out the show, making me feel as terrible as possible as I, I possibly can. Do what I can. Yeah. No, you do. <laughs> you certainly do. Um, I was waiting all morning for this going, I'm going to get her. Well, what did you do for your birthday? I see you got you got yourself, i.e. me, a new teleprompter. I can't believe we have a teleprompter. It's like my birthday. I edited the episode with Kenny um, Vaughn yes. and made sure that got up on time. And then I did some other work. And then I, Rene and I ordered out. And we had uh, from BJ's Brew House. And oh had my it, God. Uh, that's my, by the way, that's my perfect birthday. Staying at home. Well, I tried to provide anywhere. that for you. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you mean, didn't bother me. You're like I did. You <laughs> acted like you didn't even know it happened. Um, no, we, we stayed <laughs> home. We ordered out. And then uh, Irina, we put it all together. And Irina ordered me a special dessert, a little like a oh. bazooki kind of thing with oh. ice cream and stuff. And a little candlelit dinner. And it was nice. Well, I, I, I'm speechless. So I feel really this big. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. No, but like, I apologize. I mean, you're, you know, you're. It's not me. like the first time we met in your birthday and I organized this huge you know, <laughs> karaoke sing-along party with 30, 40 people and brought in a whole uh, computer and brought in the speakers and four wireless microphones and set the whole thing up. and had No, it's actually, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. <laughs> like, I forgot. <laughs> I, um, okay. Okay. Note to self. Bob likes his birthday celebrated. Listen, I'll go karaoke right now. I'll go karaoke on you right now. In 363 days. Okay. Well, that's never too late. Just because you were actually born two days ago doesn't mean that I can't celebrate tomorrow or the next day. This is what 
my conversation with my lovely wife was last night. Apparently in astrology, and I don't know this, so if anybody wants to comment in, please tell me I'm wrong. Your birthday is not necessarily the day you were born because when you're born, the sun is in a certain place. So that sun has to be in that same place again. So it could be the day before, it could be the day after. She gave me this whole explanation I checked out about three minutes in. But apparently in astrology, your birthday could be either one or two days before or one or two days after, which I don't know why they would call it your birthday. But Right. I mean, is there? why isn't there a conceived day? Because you don't know the exact day of conception unless you only do it that's once true. and we know that's it. But most people, most married couples don't know that. Okay. Even unmarried couples don't know that. Yeah. So. Did you know, little fun fact, there's only one day a month a woman can get pregnant? Two. One. It's the 48 hours from the time when the egg leaves the uh, ovary and travels down the fallopian tube and gets... I took health in fourth grade. I remember these things. <laughs> okay. okay, Bob. I really do love you and I really wish you a happy belated Thanks. birthday. Thanks. And come September 30th, Know that you will have missed mine, too. Yeah, by, <laughs> by one day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that was so bad. I was so upset. I wanted to get the right date. Okay. Yeah, but you didn't. But I have, what's April? May, June, July, August. I got five months to uh, prepare for it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do something so nice for your birthday just to make you feel bad for missing mine. Thank you. <laughs> that would be my own present to myself, doing something so nice for you just to make you feel bad. It's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> it is true. We call those backhanded presents. Yeah. There, there is like nothing. The teleprompter you gave me. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was. Um, you gave yourself. With Homer Simpson, he bought Marge a, a bowling ball with the name Homer on oh, it for yeah. her birthday. Yeah, what? I it's saw. It's for you. That's like the one episode I did see. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That's funny. Right, anyway, we got a couple minutes. What's on your mind? Oh my gosh, so many. We have a great. I'm sorry, not to cut oh, you off. I sorry. have a great, great story. Oh, okay. I love when Bob does this. What's on your mind? Oh, not to cut you off. Okay. Never mind. Don't <laughs> speak. I had a discussion, which turned into a fight, which obviously I was wrong in. Um, you know, my wife uh, works with her friend Julia, and they're setting up a, um, a drink distribution company or a drink company, and they're going to uh, putting the product together and selling. So she has to go on a business trip in a couple days to Chicago and Indianapolis. And I said, you're not going to Indianapolis. First of all, you're not going to Chicago. It's like the murder capital of the world. Hmm. Second of all, you're not going to Indianapolis. Why not? I said, because the Derek Chavin trial is almost over. And that city, regardless of what happens, that city is going to be in flames or whatever. And uh, I look, I very rarely have I ever done this with Irina, but I put my foot down. I said, you are not going on that trip. I will not allow you into that city. And she's, uh. So about three hours later, I'm lying in bed. She comes up to me and says, you know, I'm going to Indianapolis. The trial's in Minneapolis. And I go, oh, well, then, yeah, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about that story, though. Let me just say this. I love that you care. Yes. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Yes. You know, if your husband puts your foot down, you say, okay, there's a reason. It's that check in your spirit. Yes. You're protecting her. That's a beautiful thing. Why would they name two cities so close together? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I was I was really mad. We were going to the As grocery store. As much as Lexia rubbing off on yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I was mad. I was like, I, I couldn't sit. I said, there's no way you're going there because that... Yeah. City's gonna be a well, flip. Of course. And she comes in with like a map. It's like nine hours and nine or five hundred miles away, two different states. Yeah. I'm like, okay, oh, well, I mean, yeah, you can, you can go. go. Have fun. You can go. <laughs> Sorry, honey. But not Chicago. But you know what? I'm gonna go with Irina on this. Always, yeah. <laughs> I know. Not if it was Minneapolis. I know. No, yeah, I would. Yeah. I would have to back you on that. I don't want her to get in a you know, unsafe situation. Right. So. And now apparently that city's on fire again, or the next city over is on fire with the recent uh, police shooting. Yeah, no, there's so much going on in the world today. And, you know, I know we don't really, we talk about things sometimes and then, you know, it's, it airs two weeks later, so we can't really keep up on things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's old news if it's 24 hours later. Yeah. But, you know, I, I will say, uh, you know, what's going on with the vaccinations? Like, is there any one vaccination that is, is safe now? They just, you know, everybody signed up for this Johnson & Johnson vaccination and, and a few days it. later they've paused it. And I, I just don't know anymore who to believe. Um, okay, so, and that's my problem. Because, is, and let me just finish yeah. by saying this, like, this, you know, the CDC says that even if, even if you get a vaccination within... Put three masks on and ten, don't go in the house. Well, no, within 10 hours, mm -hmm. the virus has quote unquote mutated and it, you're likely not, it just continues, the efficacy of the vaccination continues to subside as the hours, not months or years go by, as the hours go by. So I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I, and I actually am not saying that I know. I'm just saying what I've read and I've researched is, doesn't support the 
cause. I love Fauci's comment. Um, uh, there's a new variant. We can't test for it. and We don't know where it is, but it's out there. So keep your mask on. Keep your mask on. Um, I, I've had this problem <laughs> okay. my whole life. It, it, again, it's always what people choose to care about. The Johnson & Johnson, apparently six women between the ages of like 18 and 50, um, what, what were they getting, blood clots or having some side effect to it? There's more than six, but that's what was reported. Well, it wasn't much more than six. Um, it was six, then it was 30. Now it's, I don't know. Okay, so even if it's 30, even if it's 100. Right. I think Johnson Johnson must have given out five or 10 million of the shots right yes. now. So it's such a small percentage. And they're like, all right, cancel the whole program or pause it. I remember when they were making the, um, when Google was still making, it's uh, self-driving cars. And they're driving, and they were testing it for a year, and then it was either Google's or Lyft's or somebody's car uh, ran over somebody at Crosswalk and killed the lady. And they said, shut the whole program down, we can't do it. There are fifty to 100,000 car accidents a month or a year in this country, and because of one accident that, yes, did end a life, keep in mind there are 22,000 automobile deaths in America every year. Nobody cares about that. But one driverless car kills somebody, which, you know, is a horrible event. And I'm sorry the lady's dead. But I've oh, got to shut the whole program down. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, sh tell people you can't drive because yeah. somebody yeah. died in a car. I don't so, know. I mean, we're kind of backwards. Yeah. But I want to talk quickly um, yes. about, not to segue, but I know we have a guest coming in, in in one minute. And I believe she's calling right now to get to express to get in. But uh, Sherry Damron okay. is um, going to be on the show today. She is a uh, pastor. Yeah, a wife, a mother, an author, a singer, songwriter, uh, Christian, Christian and gospel music, and she has quite a uh, uh, story, really. Well, I can't wait to talk to her. Yeah. All right. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Shieldsofstrength.com was created by Kenny Vaughn. Kenny loves to keep God and country close to your heart by wearing Shields of Strength American flag dog tags. These attractive pieces of Christian jewelry are available in a range of styles and shapes and some have enamel detailing to bring vibrant colors to the stars and stripes motif. Each dog tag necklace features an engraved scripture to bring strength and comfort to the wearer, making it an excellent gift idea for police officers, soldiers, and firefighters who face adversity in the call of duty or anyone with a strong sense of patriotism. Stainless steel American flag necklaces and dog tags are easy to clean, are stylish enough for wearing with any outfit, and are the perfect way to express love for your country and unshakable faith in God. Shieldsofstrength.com has a variety of cross necklaces, books, apparels, accessory, Mother's Day gifts, fitness, even gift certificates. Shop Shieldsofstrength.com. Hey, let's uh, start the show. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning, Bob. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning. Uh, today I have an amazing guest who has been a friend of mine for many years now. And uh, she has a book uh, called Undone, and it is her life journey. Uh, she is a wife, a mother, a pastor, an author, a singer, songwriter of Christian gospel music. I have her entire CD, C CDs on my phone. Um, every time I get in the car, her music comes up. It's pretty amazing. Um, and today we're going to talk about her journey, her story uh, of what she's been through and continues to go through. And we're just going to talk. Uh, I'm so excited to have you here today, Sherry. You are just a blessing in my life and in so many. Um, so welcome. Good morning. Oh, I see your puppy there. Good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning. It's good afternoon here. Oh, yes, you're in Georgia. Yeah, Georgia. Yeah, it's beautiful, Big huh? City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful day. Good morning for you. Good morning. Um, so I want to just dive right into it. Uh, Please. Your story, um, we met years ago. Um, we were introduced because um, you are doing, you're making a movie, a life story out of your your life. life. And we met uh, and I, have, I, you were gracious enough to say yes for, to me to play you, uh, the role of you, Sherry Dameron. Um, we have somewhat similar pain through our lives, just different circumstances. And so I want you to tell our audience today just... A little bit about what has gone on in your past. Um, you you were involved in you know some drugs and alcohol and and prostitution, and you have turned that all around. And you are truly one of those people that I admire uh, in so many ways. Just your gifting and your love of God, and how your life at moments was so 
you were broken and you were crying out to God and he literally turned it around and worked all things together for his glory and for good. And so please tell our audience uh, your journey. First of all, it is an honor. What an honor. I knew when I saw you, um, I knew you were the one because it, there was a connection that I couldn't explain. I mean, I truly could not explain that when I saw you. So uh, what an honor. I still, I'm like, oh, wow, this is my sister. So I'm hugging you. I'm just real. I'm hugging you. So thank you. But, you know, God has been so, so good. Um, people wonder, is there life after drugs, after alcohol, after prostitution? Um, how much worse can it get? You know, I really kind of blow people's minds when when they say, well, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, well, I'm a preacher, but I haven't always been. I was a prostitute. And and they look at me and, and they don't know whether to be scared of me or, you know, to be to stand in all. They really don't know what to do. But. Um, I didn't, let me just say this, no prostitute wants to be a prostitute. No drug addict wants to be a drug addict. No alcoholic wants to be an alcoholic. I didn't just wake up one morning and say, oh, this is what I want to do with my life. It happens before you know it. And and then you're you're left with this thing that goes, how do I get out of it? And David said it this way. David said, though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. And mm-hmm. I learned from living in hell that God was there with me the whole time. He never left me. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. You don't have to be perfect for God to be there with you. And if it were not for him, I wouldn't be where I am today. I didn't ask to be a preacher. I just, what I said was, I said, God, if you can use trash, here I am. And God said, I can make trash treasure. And and he's been doing that. It's a process. But he's been doing that ever since. And you were one of my treasures. So um, does, that, yeah. does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. I, um, I, it makes perfect sense. I, one of the things that compelled me about your story, uh, I have your book right here. It's called Undone. For anyone out there who wants to get it, it's, it's an, a great book. Um, was that you had been in a relationship, in an abusive relationship, and, um, and, it, and it broke you in many ways. And there was a scene where you were in church and this person came in and drug you out by your hair, basically. And you had had suffered so much abuse um, in, in, in with that relationship and others I, I, uh, that it left you uh, scarred, uh, not just emotionally, but physically. Um, and, and you and I talked about this um, many times. You, you suffer from endometriosis, which many, many, many women suffer from. It's it's very very common, uh, but yours was brought on by some of the physical abuse. Can you tell me about that? Um, it wasn't necessarily brought on by the physical abuse. It was worsened by the physical abuse because um, obviously I was born with endometriosis, and because of the abuse, my womb was left free floating inside of my body. So. So it was, it would literally turn upside down and the endometriosis would spill out of my body. And when they did the hysterectomy, they said that there was some question as to whether or not endometriosis will live outside of the womb. And glory to God, I was the one that proved that it will. Um, It was growing on my spine and actually also on my bowels. So they had to remove a portion of my bowels and scrape my spine because of the the pain people have no idea of the pain that is um associated and not just that but it's it can be extremely embarrassing for a young girl especially you don't know what's going on you you have no idea um, at that time i'm old um, let me just say that i'm old okay and back yeah. when all of it thank you um that's why i love you so much uh, back when all of this was first being discovered it endometriosis was a new thing and you just didn't really talk about it. You just kind of, you know, kept it quiet. So um, I've just really, it's something that, that needs to be discussed because we, we, people need to know that there's also life after endometriosis as well. So, Well, um, and one of the things that left you was um, unable to conceive, correct? correct. Uh, but that story in and of itself, which I would like you to share, is just... An incredible story. I, I don't want to give too much of it because you know they are making a, a life movie about about Sherry uh, and her life. And but you were unable to conceive, and then you tell me how you 
found your Sterling, your son, who is just the, one of the love of your loves of your life, other than your your husband, uh, Dwayne. Yeah. He is. He's. I just. I, I don't know. You know, when you uh, when the ability to be called a mom is taken from a woman, that's a lot. That's a lot to live with. Um, it, it really is. And it was because of the abuse coupled with the endometriosis. So I, that was really why I turned to drugs and alcohol and prostitution because, and why I was so angry with God. It's not just what I turned to. It was the fact that I was angry with God because my thought was, well, if this is the kind of God you are, it's not like I was raised in an abusive home or a drug home or alcohol. I never saw alcohol in my entire life. I was blown away when I realized you could buy alcohol at a convenience store. I was scared to death. I thought, my God, what is going on here? So this was a new thing to me. I, I was raised in church to be, you know, good. They had to teach me how to smoke for heavenly day sakes. I learned really well. But anyway, <laughs> you know, but it, it was it was all it was all new to me. And I was so angry with God because I could not have children because of the abuse that I just said, whatever, Let, I'll just do everything, whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. And when I came back, I finally, you know, God began to put my life back in the path that it should be. I got a call one day from um, the Department of Family and Children's Services. And they asked me, and I don't, you got to remember, I'm an only child. Not only am I an only child, but I don't have children. So I know, I don't know nothing about birth, but no babies is what I'm trying to say. I don't know nothing about children at all. And I got a call and they asked me, would I um, take this child that was found? He was four years old. He was found on the highway, the number one highway. That's a main highway that goes right through here. And his parents were literally just messed up and they were so drugged out of their head. They didn't even know he had left the house, had escaped at four and was in the middle of the highway. And they asked me what I could get him to keep him out of foster care. He was actually my first cousin. So guess what? I've got a messed up family too, but he was actually my first cousin and, and I didn't know him. He didn't know me. And I said, of course. So I went to the department of Fam family and children services and I picked him up and I had to go buy this child seat. You know, they have to sit in seats now that you don't just sit him in the seat next to you. Yeah. I didn't know anything about that either. They had to help me hook that thing up. And, and I, I, um, I went and picked, I, I put that in the seat and I had it all fixed up, you know, and I, I picked Sterling up. I set him in the back seat and I can still see him today. I can still see him through the, my review mirror. I was looking at him and he was petting. He was just kind of patting the seat that I had set him down in. And he not spoken to me, not one word. This child had said nothing to me. And, and I'm just looking at him. I'm scared of him. He's scared of me. We Neither one of us knew which direction to turn. And the first words he ever spoke to me was, and remember, he's my, he's my first cousin. I didn't know this kid. The first words he spoke to me was, is this mine? Mm. He was so proud of the child seat. It was new. It was, you know, and he had never sat in one. And I said, yeah, buddy, that's, that's, that's yours. And I'm thinking to myself right then, nobody's going to take this kid from me. I mean, I just knew he belonged to me. Hmm. I got him home, Corey. And you, I mean, I had, I didn't know, again, I didn't know anything about children. So I had gone and I had, I had him a room. I made him a room, of course, fixed up an extra room in my house. I had bought him a bed, bought a tons of toys. I'm talking about, I had a blast in Toys R Us buying toys for it him. is fun huh <laughs> it's so Bob's much going, fun yes. yeah and i had no i'm you know what a kids what a little boy's like i didn't know but if i thought he liked it i bought it so his room was just i mean it was crazy at what all he had when he walked in this room and i mean i had paintings on the wall um that said you are fearfully and wonderfully made because i knew the first thing was to begin to put the word of god in him and i bought all this food if it had donald duck or mickey mouse on it i bought it and i put it in the bottom of the refrigerator because i knew he was short because he's um, <laughs> you know he can't see up tall so i put it in the bottom of the refrigerator so we walked in the door of the house he still has only spoken that one phrase to me is this mine 
That's all that kid had said to me. And I walked in the door with him and I first took him to the toys because I didn't want him to be afraid. I mean, you know, I'm thinking he's already had a, you know, hellacious life and I wanted to make him at home. And I thought, well, toys, that's how you make a kid at home toys. Mm -hmm. So I took him to the room and I showed him the toys. He didn't say a word to me. He just held on to my hand and I could still see him looking up at me. He had this blonde, this white hair. I mean, he was just precious and he's just looking up at me, just squeezing my hand. And I thought, okay, that didn't work. Now what? So I took him to the refrigerator and I said, I bought all of this food for you. I said, I don't know what you like and what you don't like. I said, you tell me what you like and we'll buy more. What you don't like, you don't have to eat. We'll know not to get that again. And he looked at me. Tears began to stream down his face. He put his little arms around my legs and he said, that's for me. And I said, yes, baby, that's for you. He was prouder over the food than he was anything and I knew right then I mean I said in in, in within myself I said that this kid's not this he's mine I knew he was mine and from that day forward he's never left my heart my sight my anything he's just um it was a gift from you God. guys do share a special bond I've seen it and it's so beautiful and he's such a, an amazing young man now right he's yes he's, he's a young man um and that all happened uh before you you were blessed. I mean, you, you really were wondering at one point in your life, you know, having gone through the abuse and gone through what you had gone through, you if you were going to have that family unit, that life, that man was going to come into your life and honor you and cherish you. And and that happened. God really restored everything, right? Everything. Yeah, he did. I mean, you have, a, yeah. you have a husband who loves you unconditionally and adores you and a son that feels the same way. How did you meet, uh, I want to hear about Dwayne, your husband, how did you meet him? And um, well, I know how, but tell our audience how you met him. And, you know, you're, you're one of the reasons I love you so much as you are a true story of hope. You know, people Mm -hmm. can get discouraged. And the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And you really embody that scripture, you you did that you delighted yourself in him. And he's certainly restored all that has gone on in your life, you know, brought he's, he's, it's like Job. Job was, you know, everything was taken from Job and then uh, really, truly. And then it, it's, he was restored. So tell us a little. Yeah. About Dwayne. You know, my cowboy. Yeah. He's my cowboy. Um, I'm a cowgirl and I just always wanted a cowboy, you know, and here's the funny can, thing. Can, can I interject for one second? I Please. just have to tell this really quick because Sherry tell is it. really one of the funniest people I know. And she and I share many likes and this is a side note, and it's hilarious. We were on the phone a couple weeks ago. I don't even know. And she, she was talking about something. I don't even remember, but she says, she says, Aramateras. Aramateras? Aramateras. And I said, is that like a new facial cream or some kind of like some something to do with your, or... like, like Armitage, you know? Like you do this like skin scrub or something. She goes, no, you know, Aramateras. And I'm like, Aramateras, Aramateras. I'm looking it up. I'm on the phone. I'm looking. I'm on Google going, Aramateras. <laughs> and tell the audience what it actually, what you were actually saying. I, I, I was really talking about my lips the whole time. I wanted to get air in my tires. That's what I tell my <laughs> facial lady is I need I some love- air in my lips. I want my lips to look like yours. And I, well, I tried to pick mine off Aramateras. my face, but... We go through this all the time. And like, I'll be texting her while I'm on the phone. And I'm like, can you define what you're talking about? What does Aramitage mean? She's like, no, air in my tires. Anyway. Sherry, Sherry, you'll love this one. When I was a kid, we were traveling cross country down south. And you know, the Stuckey's chain store? Yes. Right. So we were in a Stuckey's and my father went to the counter and said, do you have any milk? And the counter lady said, what? He said, milk. She said, what? He said, do you have any milk? And she gets a disgusting... Uh, what or chocolate? And I'm just looking at, yeah, dad, I didn't see that one coming. Sorry. (laughs) I love it. That's us. That's exactly. It happens every time. And it's so cute. I just love you. But anyway, back to Dwayne, because I really want want the the listeners to hear this beautiful story. Today, I was fixing to. (laughs) Yeah, she gives me a message. I'm fixing to. And I don't even know how to spell that. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, 
Okay. It's, it's it's literally a comedy. Our text messages, if I printed them out, would be a whole separate like episode two of your book. Yeah, because if you have a southern accent, the voice yeah. to, voice to text doesn't work too well. Yeah, but I'm gonna no. I know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play her and have to 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 do, Can you do a Shara accent? Dameron. Well, I know I can. I I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm learning. That's why I call her and we talk all the time. Right? You got it. Okay. You, got, Go you just Back add to your words together. You just add several words together and make them one word. That's, okay. that's, that's yeah, it. Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy is... does one. He says, um, sensuous. And everybody goes, yeah, well, sensuous up. Would you get me a beer? <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's perfect right there, sensuous. Well, and to there Dwayne, go. going back to Dwayne, because I, okay. for one, I'm a huge fan of Dwayne. He does ask you quite often to spell what it is that you are trying to say to him. Yes. That's what he said, because, see, here he's a cowboy, but, I mean, you know, he spent seven years in Italy. I mean, he's Air Force, 21 years Air Force, so he's well-traveled. Well, I mean, he's brilliant. He's just absolutely brilliant, even though he's a cowboy. He's not like, he doesn't have my dialect at all. So, you know, he's constantly saying, honey, could, could you could you spell that, please? No, I can't spell it, but you know what I'm saying. And the funny thing is, he's actually from Oak Park same place i mean we grew up together um our parents were were friends were like best friends they traveled together i mean i tell everybody and it's kind of funny but it's the truth um i slept with him when i was one and two and they're like what but i mean we grew up together we grew up in the crib together you know so he's three years older than me but we we went to kentucky we traveled to kentucky went on vacations and stuff together and we were the couple that was supposed to be married. I sent you that picture. You, you've seen it several times yeah. of um, the eighth grade prom. That was a hoot. I had big hair then too. Uh, it was bigger then than it is now. But we went to the eighth grade prom together. And we were the couple that, that were supposed to be married. Now, mind you, Oak Park is a population 300. Okay. You know, and half of them are 96 and above. But, but, you know, we were the couple that were supposed to be married, but he got, he went into the air force and then, you know, of course I met and married anyway, you know, all that story, but, um, I didn't see him for 21 years, Mm. 22 years that I did not see him whatsoever. And I was actually, after I got Sterling, I'd had him about a year and I lived five miles from my parents, but. With a child, I really felt like Sterling needed a man in his life. So I um, I was going to build a house closer to my mom and my dad on their property. And that, I was on the back porch. I was praying. My hair was wet. I had long hair then. Long My hair is curly. So I had long curly hair. No makeup. Bunny, Dwayne says, bunny foo-foo slippers. slippers. My, my clothes didn't match. Nothing. I had been crying all day long. Because, you know, we pray and we tell God what we want him to know. We don't ask him nor wait on his answer. Mm -hmm. We're just telling him, God, this is what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. I told him I was going to build a house. I put my house up for sale. And I'd already told my mom I put my house up for sale. And I was going to build a house because this was my words. God, you're not going to drop a man out of the sky. After all, I'm tainted. That's what the church told me. I was tainted. Mm. so I said, okay, then I'm tainted. I'm not worthy of a man. And that's okay. I've got Sterling. That was my dream was Sterling. I never dreamed anything else, but I, I had a son. I was a mom. And, and I thought, you know what, me and this baby, we can go through the world together. Walk through this world mm. with me. That's what, that's all I cared about, you know? So I, I was on the back porch. My mom had Sterling. She was keeping Sterling that day because I was going to spend the day in prayer. So as I'm on the back porch, I get a, a knock at my carport door. And I thought, I mean, who would who is coming to see me? So I went to the door to open the door and I opened it. And there stands Dwayne Dameron. And short. God kind of dropped him from the sky. <laughs> Just dropped him, Air Force, flew him in. And I mean, he's standing there in shorts, brogan boots, and a t-shirt. I mean, you can't get any more Oak Park and Redneck than that. 
<laughs> and I thought, You're so oh, my cute. Lord. It was just, to me, a vision of loveliness. I mean, oh. I was just blown away immediately when I opened the door. And this is what he said. I opened the door and he looked at me and he went, oh, my God, you're beautiful. And I went, thank you, God, I'll take him. He's blind. Truth <laughs> before God. It happened. Truth I'm before laughing. God. He's it is the truth. I mean, it is the honest to God's truth. And 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 then he, he looked, I looked at him and I went, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's your wife? Because I thought. Oh, dear God, where's your wife? And he said, I'm not married. I said, good, I don't have to kill her. That's the truth I said. (laughs) Because you know me, I don't think, Corey. (laughs) That's it. I love Bob. I love Bob. Okay, I need Bob in my life. It's the truth before God. He said that last year, everybody needs a Bob. That's right, everybody needs a Bob. I mean, I, people think I make this stuff up, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, no, it's you it's know a me. really, it's really like, and I say this loosely, but one of my favorite movies is Pretty Woman. It's really like Pretty Woman, an officer and a gentleman, and mm-hmm. you know, it's your life is incredible, and that's why they're making a movie about it. And it's you know, it's what dreams, dreams and stories are made of, right? I mean, yes, yes. it's not everybody opens up the door. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Hello, uh, you know, um, but not everyone opens up the door after you've, you know, you been given a child. You spend more time on your back porch and your shorts with your hair undone. On my back porch with my shorts and my, yes, exactly. But um, so you meet, he comes to the front door and pretty much from that moment, uh, my baby you knew. My say hello. Right. Mm-hmm. You knew. I knew. I mean, I, I just immediately, I, I, I knew because I had never stopped loving him. He had never stopped mm-hmm loving me the funny thing is the reason he came back was because his mom had died and he had came to the he came to the funeral well i didn't go to the funeral for the simple reason i was just in a mess i was in a you know trying to decide what do i do sell the house but you know and that's why i mean i was just a basket case for those three days that he was here and i i mean i knew he would be there but i guess i I don't know what i was thinking i have no idea But he had actually went to my mom's house and asked my mom, did she, because my mom and dad have property, and asked my mom, did did she know, did they have any property for for sale? Or did she, because he he said, I'm going to move back. He said, life's too short. I should have moved back already. He said, but he had just retired. Um, He said, I'm coming back home. And mama said, well, actually, mama said, Sherry has just told me she wants to sell her house. Well, I'm two minutes from his dad, from, from where we all grew up, you know, with my house. And mama said, and this is what mama said. She said, um, Sherry just told me she wanted to sell her house. She said, oh, by the way, y'all had a thing back in the day, didn't you? Because my mama's always wanted me to marry him. Always. You know, so mama's just kind of putting that out there. And Dwayne said he was thinking, okay, that was kind of forward. That's awkward. You know, (laughs) but he he was living in Ohio. He had, had just retired. And he had no intention of getting a girl with the house with a child, but that was exactly what he got. And he asked me while he's standing at the door, he said, your mom told me that your house was for sale. And he said, is it? And I said, if a child and a woman comes with it, I say it comes with me and the kid. Yeah. (laughs) No, it comes fully loaded is what I'm trying to tell you. (laughs) And um, he just kind of looked and you'd have to know Dwayne. I mean, you know, he, he just, he's kind of bashful. So he kind of turned red all over and he's like, okay, she's really forward right now. And so is her mom, you know? So he actually, he came in um, to, and I'm picky. You know me, I'm extremely picky. You can look at me until I'm extremely picky. My house is just, uh, everything is immaculate. And the first thing that caught my attention was before the man walked in my door, he took his shoes off. Mm. That caught my attention because I thought, okay, I like this guy already i liked him already sterling was not so sterling didn't meet him at that time but he asked me out he asked me if he said will you would, would you go out with me and i said yes i didn't even think i didn't need to pray nothing i said yes i said but sterling has to go i'm not i won't go without sterling he said that's not a problem 
This man drove back to Ohio. He went to the Air Force base and he picked up all of this Air Force stuff, dog tag, a flight suit and everything mm -hmm. for Sterling. He drove, that's 13 hours from Georgia. He drove all the way back to Georgia then with all of this stuff. He shows up at the door and he picks Sterling and I up. Well, our date, our first date was we went, it's called dirt road riding here in Georgia. So he's got this big four wheel drive. He did then four wheel drive, Dodge pickup truck, big tires, you know, all of this, that all of the things that a kid goes, Oh, wow. You know, yeah. this is cool. Yeah. And he gives all this stuff to Sterling. You have no Sterling. Sterling loves a suit. He's always loved airplanes. So Sterling's already just enamored with this man. We Sterling, he picks Sterling up and he puts him in the truck. He helps me in the truck. He opens the door for me, still does to this day, 15 years mm -hmm. later. He opens the door for me, helps me in the truck, helps Sterling. And he's got his cowboy boots on and his jeans by, at, at this first date. And I'm going, okay, I'll keep him. That's, yeah, that's good. That's really good. So he puts Sterling in his lap and he lets him drive his truck. We got home. We got home that, that just like at, in the evening. He brings me to the door. He walks. He doesn't come in the door. He just drops us off at the door. We walked in. Sterling's holding my hand. Sterling looked up at me and he said, Mama, can we keep him? <laughs> like the car seat and the food. It's like, she said, can we keep him? Yes. I said, we are certainly going to try, buddy. Um, so, I mean, he came, he drove back in two every single weekend. He drove 13 hours on Friday when he got off of work because he's a medic. He was then. He drove. 13 hours from Ohio to Georgia just to go to church with me, take me out on Saturday night, Sterling and I go to church with us. And then he would drive back on Sunday, 13 hours to go to work. He did that every single weekend, every wow. weekend. So just to clarify how long you, 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 you were broken. You, you couldn't have children. You, you, God pretty much dropped Sterling in your lap. <laughs> this beautiful child that was instantly yours. And from the time God did that to the time that you met Dwayne, how much time was there in between? Or was that pretty immediate as well? It was a year oh, and a half. A year and a half. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, God, Sterling my point sick. is God can expedite anything. He can literally yes. do things overnight. I talk I constantly, Bob and I are talking about this all the time, right? How, you yes. know, people that are broken out there right now, people are suffering, they're depressed, they're suicidal, they're, mm -hmm. you know, really struggling with a lot of different things that are going on right now. And you're literally the perfect example that God can change things and turn things around in a second. Mm -hmm. Right? So shift. He just shifts. Yeah. When when you when you give up and you let go, he suddenly shifts. And everything changes. When Dwayne came back, it was May. His mother was buried on Mother's Day. It was in May of the same year in October we were married. Hmm. We didn't yeah. wait. I'm getting old. I mean, you know, I'm like, ah, uh -uh, this is long. Well, when enough. you know, you know. I mean, when you, that's it. When you know, you know. And that's the thing. And I tell people this all the time because young girls come to me all the time and say, you know, well, Pastor Sherry, how do you know? You know, how 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 did you know that? He was the one because you know it in your spirit. You, you don't know it in your head. It, it doesn't matter that. I mean, he looked good. That was good. He was he sweet was and kind. You know, he's a cowboy. And that, that all of that was good. And, and I was fixing to make a bad move. And, you know, he came in and took the house, the girl, the, the kid, the everything. But, you you know, and, and wait until you know. You just wait, wait that's, until you know. That's, that's mm -hmm. the word I keep getting is just wait on the Lord, right? Wait. Yeah, wait on uh, the Lord. I'm not good at waiting. It's a whole other show, but um, it's, it's hard to wait sometimes, you know? And and you had gone through so much. You really had. And, you know, for anyone out there, like, I, I just want to know from you at your lowest moment when you're on your knees and you're struggling and you're on drugs or you've just been with someone, you know, in your those days, were you crying out to God? Were you asking God even then, you know, intervene? What do I do? I think the main thing that I was doing, and I know when I would lay my head on the pillow at night, 
I would say, God, are you there? Kind of like Dolly Parton. Hello, God. Yeah. Are you there? Are you listening anymore? Have I messed up so horribly that you don't, you no longer hear me? Or this was one of the main things that I asked God. And, and this is, this is the truth. I just have to be transparent. God, what did I do so horribly that makes you hate mm-hmm. me so badly? Because that was what I thought. But he does say, mm-hmm. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Never, never. And what I realize now, what I realize is it's not anything that I did. It's never anything. You can't do anything so horribly. Did you see that big light just come on behind her? Yes. Did you see that? Did you just turn a light on? I saw it. Did you? Yeah, the light changed in your room. Your whole light just went. In in your room, the light changed, which means, well. I know what Corey wow. thinks it is. I think it was an electrical issue. No, Corey... it's not. It's a totally there. It was like a big. It was like a big light just came on. But anyway, um, wow. Um, it, There's I no mean... electrical issues, Bob, in my house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was using the hair dryer and they it's turned not... it off, and that's what happened. There's nobody it's... here but me. I promise you, it's just me. So uh, Sherry and I have had many countless, countless conversations, and um, I want to get. Yeah, okay. Countless, yeah. Countless, countless. Um and uh she we're gonna talk about her musical career in a minute because it's just an amazing career and I love all of her songs, but she and I have stayed up many nights on the phone. But one of the things I love about her is and I can hardly say this without laughing um, hysterically, because you're so funny and you don't even mean to be. She had kind of a hair issue at one point. I'm not going to say. I'll let her tell you the story if she wants to. (laughs) But (laughs) I started getting these text messages that were hilarious. And she ended up, long story short, her mama, who she wrote a song about, and it's called Hello Mama, and it is so beautiful. I love that song. Uh, But her mama got her this head helmet infrared contraption. And Sherry sat with this helmet on like so religiously it, like night or? yes i don't know but religiously and it, it helped grow her hair back i said you should be the yeah. poster child um tell us a little bit about oh about that sorry <laughs> <laughs> Corey, for those who can't see Corey just broke her chair i feel I, i'm so sorry yeah, yeah. Corey, you're yeah. fixing to fall <laughs> i know i know i know i know i know uh but it actually, I'm, t- I'm talking about this for two reasons. One, it was hilarious. Not so funny when you're, you're losing your hair. But yeah. two, it, this, this contraption, this helmet actually worked. So, and I yeah, thought she was did. kidding when she sent me a picture of it. I was like, are you punking me? That's hilarious. There she sat with her little red hel- white helmet with a red, you know. Yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, is that in school, <laughs> I had the helmet, Okay. Because I was in I was in remedial classes, and Mama said, "Baby, I finally got you your helmet." The reason I was losing my hair is, I mean, on the back of my head, it was all gone. I mean, you know, you saw it because I know we prayed heavily. Pictures heavily. I'm talking about prayed, anointed, you name it, we did it. And it was it was a hormone issue because of the endometriosis, because I had to have to have the hysterectomy, the hysterectomy. <laughs> so soon then it that's what happened they they switched my hormones and my hair starts falling out and i'm going not my hair i mean take it please not i mean it was just one spot i mean i'm like an old man that I'm, <laughs> this thing these things only happen to me i didn't know what to do but to call you Corey, help so my mama gets me this helmet it's so okay. awesome it's called it's, I Restore. Okay. And you put this thing on your head. You remember I also got that thing that you put in your mouth? Oh, yeah. Rises. You had the whole thing going. I was like, whoa, we are. Are you going to the moon? Are you yeah, going to the moon? God, it's hilarious. You try. What was the thing you put in your young. mouth? That was a contraption that's supposed to help you not have wrinkles. And it's infrared as well. And you <laughs> so Because there, there's a new toothbrush that I want to get that's almost like the whitening things. That you literally put this yeah. thing and it sonically cleans your teeth? Yes. You're She's shaking, probably got it. You're shaking your head like you've tried it. It doesn't work. I definitely want to get well, it. Um, well, I'm just saying it doesn't work like it, they say it does. <laughs> 
So I Sherry get all and I, this stuff. yeah, I think that's why I identify with hers because I've always been referred to as somewhat kind of like Lucille Ball, and I finally met my match. She's literally like Lucille Ball. She's just hilarious. Hilarious. Um, one of the most successful actresses ever, and one of the best business women ever. Yeah, you look just like her. No, not look. I just know, the what happens in your her. life, like the the, the events that you mean take the place. Lucille Ball show. Yes, the Lucille Ball show. Um, but thank you for that, Bob. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, part. Bob. Yeah. Uh, let's segue a little bit into your music because your whole life you wanted to um, you've wanted to play at uh, Radio City Music Hall. No. Right. Grand Ole Opry. Grand Ole Opry. Grand I'm Ole sorry. Opry. I always get the two confused. Um, at the Grand Ole Opry. It's yeah. a dream of yours. And uh, we were just talking about this. You got pulled over. <laughs> And the police officer thought she was Dolly Parton. Really? Yeah. It was hilarious. Uh, but you have a beautiful voice and you write all your own music. You've got CDs and videos. And um, we're going to sh- we're gonna show a couple clips of, of two of your videos. Um, but one of the things maybe one of the things people don't know about you is that you were um, granted the rights to Loretta Lynn's number one uh, hit song, You Ain't Woman Enough. Yes. And she actually donates her portion of her of the proceeds back to uh, the ministry, your ministry, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. Um, how did you get that? That's an incredible thing. Loretta Lynn is amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, how did you get those yeah. rights? Talk about yeah. that. I didn't have any better sense than mm-hmm. to just ask. I mean, really, I was walking around the house one day and I'm always singing. I, I mean, I do it. I sing everything I do when I'm preaching. I'm singing. And I mean, it may be whiskey bent and hell bound. I mean, but I'm always, uh, it just comes out of me and I can't help it. Uh, since I was a kid, it's all I've been, you know, we were the darlings. We, we just, that's what we did. We got out on the front porch and we sang. Everybody played a musical instrument. It may be the spoons. It may be a washboard. It may be whatever. But everybody played a musical instrument. And I always, it was my dream. It was what I always wanted. It was to sing. When I was um, 17 years old, I was I had the opportunity to sign with a producer in Nashville who was Barbara Mandrell's producer. It was just a dream come true. And I was about to get married. And the the person I was about to marry, um, who I ended up married, marrying, said, you know, you have to choose. You want me or that, but you can't have both. And, you know. I, of course, chose him and and left my music career behind me because, as I was told, you're not you're 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 stupid. You can't you can't do that. You're that. What do you think you're doing? You're just a girl from Oak Park and remedial classes. You can't because I couldn't even I couldn't read. I literally could not read. So I, I walked away from it and. It's so good of God because, you know, dreams forgotten to him. Oh, great dreams that we forget. He's holding on to. He doesn't forget those things because he places it in our heart and in our spirit to begin with. So a dream that I had just completely forgotten and given up on. I I knew that I would never sing. I would never go there. I would never do that. So I learned not to hope for it. And the Bible said hope deferred, deferred makes the heart, the heart sick. sick. And I, I did. I had no idea that I had stopped hoping and stopped dreaming, but he had not. He still he, he was holding it. He's holding it in his hands. And I can still see it even now. How, oh, he's so good. He's such a good God. And I was walking around the house and, and here I am. I've married my cowboy. And I was singing, and you ain't a woman enough to take my man. And that's what I was singing. And all of a sudden, it just came up in me. And I went to my piano, and I sat down, and I started singing, and you ain't devil enough to change God's plans. And within 10 minutes, I had written the entire song. You're not, you ain't devil enough to change God's plans. Because what I suddenly realized was, is that God is such a big God. That no matter how we how we um, U-turn, no matter how many wrong roads we take, 
no matter how much hope we lose, God can still get you to your intended purpose. He will still get you to your intended purpose because although you may have to shift here and there, he's going to get you to what he placed in you before the foundation of the world because he said before the foundation of the world, he knew you. Not just when you were born, but for the foundation of the world, he already knew you and had already placed a plan and a purpose in you for his kingdom and for his glory. He said, for his thoughts towards you are that of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. So although I had given up on myself, God had not given up, given up on me. So I wrote the song. I wanted to record it. I talked to Dwayne about it. And of course, Dwayne's always been just very, very, very um, supportive of me. And he said, well, Sherry, just write Loretta and ask her for the rights. And I thought, okay, well, there's a novel idea. So I sent her Sometimes an email. Sometimes it's just as simple as that, right? It's just that simple. I sent her an email and I was so shocked. Um, her production company called me a week later and began to talk to me, asking me about the ministry. They had looked me up online. They asked me about the ministry and they gave me the rights. Now, at that time, they would get 50% of all of the proceeds. Loretta Lynn heard the song, heard me preach, and sent a message to me that she wanted to donate all of the proceeds back to the ministry. So, I mean, it's just a, it's just a keep dreaming. You just keep dreaming. You know, it's, and sometimes it happens overnight and sometimes it happens, you know, in 10 years and you, you're right. Never give, never lose hope, right? Like you said, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Um, yeah. Tell me about, um, you have a song, you have many songs. And, you know, here's really a fun fact that it literally happens. I don't know how it happens. You're, you're, every time I get in my car, your music comes up. It's not like it's even first on the, but it's usually at like a really poignant moment in my my life. Like I'll have just gotten off the phone and, and I'll get in the car. Well, I'll have just gotten off the phone with my mom. And I'll get in, uh, in the car and your the song Hello Mama will come up. Or, you know, it's just, you, I've told you this before. You're, it, mm-hmm. It's so mm-hmm. timely. And those are the little things that God does in my life. But you wrote a song for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. And you have many music videos out there. And that... Uh, clip I think Bob has he's going to play it um tell us a little bit about that as we play the video maybe a portion of it a portion of it yeah for such a time as this you know one of the funny things about for such a time as this is we know you know you said it you never give up hope God is always going to fulfill your purpose always sometimes he does it instantly and sometimes your purpose is fulfilled in portions and I just preached about that. David was was anointed king of Israel and immediately sent right back to the backside of the desert and stayed there for six years. Then he was anointed again king of Judah. And it took another six years before he was actually anointed king of Israel. So he received his anointing in three separate portions. And, and I'm seeing God begin working that in my life. God spoke to me. My, my dream has been to, to build a studio, not a church. I've always said, I know I'm a pastor, but I'm not a pastor. You know, man, I'm a little different. I'm a little weird. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little bit country. You're a little I don't bit think you're wrong. weird at all. No. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we get along so better. We're both I weird. Know. <laughs> but, but I, God spoke to me to to um, to build a studio because the thing is, is that people come to church and, and it's churchy. You know, we think that we're all supposed to be fixed up when we come to church. Well, no, you come to church broken. You come to church just like you are. Mm. And then God will fix the brokenness. He will heal the brokenness. He pours them all in the wounds. So we're we're trying to get everybody fixed up and then get them to church. And I'm just not like that. I mean, Mm -mm. you know, that's just not me at all. I've got a different, a different kind of people. And we're a new breed. We're just a whole new breed. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to build a studio. 
where we can do all of our filming, all of our studioing, all of everything in the studio so that it's not a church atmosphere. Doesn't mean that it's not holy. Doesn't mean that the presence of God is not there, but, but it means that when you walk into it, you, you feel welcome. You know that no matter what, I'm at home here. I, I'm, I'm welcome here. So we started that. It's been, um, we actually started the process. Uh, God gave me the vision three years ago and I didn't have any land. Well, the next thing I knew, somebody gave me 30 acres of land, gave me, can I say, 30 acres of land right on the number one highway, which is exactly where Sterling was found. And then on top of that, yes. On top and of you that, think that's I mean, the electrical problem in yeah, her room? Yeah, it was an electrical problem in the, uh, <laughs> there the car when the guy stopped I, and said, you can have this. I, so he, that, somebody gave me the land, and I'm going, okay, God, I've got 30 acres of land. Now, what do I do with this? So I waited and waited and waited, and then finally, the next thing I knew, I, I received um, a donation from online from someone who watches me. Actually, they were watching me on TV. Donations started coming from everywhere. At this point, we have a studio completely dried in, debt-free, completely debt-free. Now, I don't preach money. I'm not one of those preachers. I'm not about money. I'm about people because I want to see people like me know that that their dreams can come true and that their hopes. Are, I mean, whoever thought I'd end up in Hollywood at your house? I mean, good. Come on. I mean, I, I didn't, I, I, that's just crazy to me. We actually are going to e- edit in a picture right now where Sherry came out. We went to a, a an award show. And yeah. so her, she stayed at her and uh, her friend Truett, who was adorable, uh, stayed at my house for four days and we had such a four blast. Days. We did. Yeah. yeah. That was when my hair, I, my hair was half gone in the back. You remember that's you kept right. walking up to me, putting your hand on the back of my head, going restore Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I did. I was, and we're happy to say it happened along with I Restore Helmet. Uh, it's a little plug for you, I Restore that's Helmet. It. Electrical problems Thank in your you house too, huh? <laughs> no, but you're right. No, I, didn't I mean, God can kind of turn things around in a second. He'll just um, turn around, and you know, we were in the process of um, of finishing the the studio. I was so, so, so excited. And then COVID in March of last year was when COVID, and I mean, it's like everything just stopped. Everything just died. So now I've got to have a building sitting there unfinished. And in the, the, one of the videos that I did for such a time as this, I'm singing in that building because I refuse to give up. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not through dreaming. See, that's the problem. God will stop answering. He will stop walking with you when you stop dreaming. As long Mm -hmm. as you're dreaming. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how bad you've messed up. I don't care where you are. As long as you've got a dream, God's got an answer. And I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to stop dreaming because I'm not, he's not, I know he's not, he's not finished with me. No, he's he's certainly not finished with you. He's just getting started. He's just getting started. And that's the thing that, that, People need to know, people who are hurting, women, men, doesn't matter what age, is that, you know, God is a dreamer. Look at what he's a dreamer. dreamed and at. He can take a mug shot, you know, a, a mess and turn it into a message or a test yes. that you've been through and turn it into a testimony. And I always say this, everybody has a mug shot. You know, some people yes. it's on the front of Time magazine. Some people, it's nobody ever sees it, but some people it's in the post office. Some people's in the post office. <laughs> Bob always is being <laughs> literal with me. Um, and you are right. Uh, but it's true. And I think, you know, we're all in this together. And so I love, though, I love you for sharing your mugshot. It's not easy. It takes courage and bravery mm-hmm. to come forward and say, hey, this is what I've been through, you know, and this is where you can go. Um, yeah. and, and just like God said, you know, to Lot's wife, don't look back. You'll be a pillar of salt, right? That's right. You, That's you right. aren't looking yeah. back. You're looking forward. But at the same time, mm-hmm. you're sharing your message. Your mess that has turned into your message um, to yeah, inspire and perfect. encourage others, right? Let me, let me say this, Corey. You will like this. And you know this story. But th- this is perfect right here about your past 
when I first just when Dwayne really pushed me to go make the CD, make my first CD. And I mean, I was just, I was in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. And in a studio, I love a studio. I absolutely love a studio and I was singing and it was amazing. And we did the CD and the CD got a little bit of attention, nothing major, but it got it for me. It was major, you know, and I'm like, I'm a star. This is awesome. You know, and it was just, I was so excited. And then we were on TV. We were on national TV. Well, all of a sudden, suddenly, somebody from my past showed up and made a phone call to someone who was um, heavily supporting me and behind me and helping me. Um, and I, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you, it was the Perrys. You, you, they're amazing. There's Southern gospel to the core, mm-hmm. but um, they're a very good friend of mine. And this person called them. And told them, said, uh, you do not know everything about Sherry Dameron. Well, they did not. My, my, I had shared with Dwayne some of my past, but not the prostitution part. It's just not something you wanted everybody to know. And Dwayne didn't know that. And this is what this person told them was that she was going to call Dwayne. Because Dwayne needed to know my full past. So they called me to let me know, to warn me, because they wanted me to know ahead of time so I could begin to pray. And I thought, because you have to know Dwayne, Dwayne is a gentleman, officer and a gentleman. That mm-hmm. is Dwayne. He's on the up and up. And I know Dwayne. And my thought was, I mean, I knew him. He, he will divorce me because mm-hmm. in his mind, I will have, I've lied to him. It's not that I lied. I just didn't divulge all the information. He never asked. I mean, you know, you don't normally ask your future you wife, were you a prostitute? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just don't do that. So I that he did not know that. So I thought, okay, God, what do I do? Because now, I, I mean, everything is now, my dreams are coming true. I've got this amazing man, this amazing kid, and this, my past is about to destroy my future. So what do I do? I'm about to use, lose my husband, the love of my life. So I thought, okay, I need to tell him before they get to him. And I called him. He was at work. And I said, I, I need, he was in Atlanta, Georgia. And I said, I need to come see you. And he knew something was up. And he said, okay. He said, I'll, um, I'll see you after work. Well, he went ahead and made reservations at Papa Do's, huge restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm talking about this huge, fancy, nice restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. I didn't want to go to Papa Do's. I was just a nervous wreck, you know. So we got there. He put me in the truck, took me to Papa Do's. And I couldn't wait anymore. We were sitting in the middle of Papa Do's, this huge restaurant, packed. The restaurant is packed. And I said, I, I, he said, so what did you, what, what was so important that you came all the way to Atlanta? So I said, I told him, I said, this is something you don't know about me. And I told him what was about to happen what was about to be um, uh, aired, my dirty laundry, if you will. And Dwayne is just sitting there. He's very staunch. He's very, um, he's just amazing. But he was just sitting there still listening to me. He didn't move. He was just listening to me. And I've got tears streaming down my face. And I said, I, um, I know you're, I know you'll leave me. And uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all because I am trash and, and I don't want that on you. I mean, you know, you're, you're a gentleman and you deserve better than that. And he immediately, I need your Kleenexes, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Um, he stood up very quickly. And Papa Do's is, is the, the floors are cement. So in, in uh, Georgia, we say cement. S E E M E N T C M E N T. So the floors are cement. And when he stood up, I mean, it just made to me, it was the loudest noise I had ever heard. Mm. And it was so sudden that he stood up and it made such a, the noise was so loud. Literally, I'm telling you, that restaurant went silent. Because it, it was like an anger in him. And I'm going, oh, God, this is embarrassing. 
and he moved his chair aside and he got down on one knee. He put his hand out to me and he said, woman of God, he said, we will carry this gospel around the world. Will you marry me? We had been married four or five years at that time. That's the kind of man he is. And that's what God will do when somebody tries to bring your past up to you immediately. It was, it was like my future was solidified in this man that God had brought to me. Mm -hmm. It was the most amazing moment. I guess that I've ever, ever experienced. So everybody in the restaurant thinks he's just proposing to me. You oh, know, right, so but you've been married five their, years. <laughs> uh, yeah. And they're all clapping their hands and I'm squalling and he's squalling. And I mean, it was uh, amazing. That is amazing. Such a- I hate to ask this question. Did that lady ever call him? Uh, actually, no. But you she know what? Well, it's good that you got it. You, you told yeah. him. Yeah. Right? That's like, that's a movie, right? Right. It's like what happens, your life is like a movie. That's why it's got to be told, but it's. The good news is, Corey, what that was was a threat because Mm -hmm. that's what your past does to you. Mm -hmm. Your past threatens you. It can't do anything to you. Your past is your past. And all it does is it just threatens you. So when people are depressed and suicidal and, and because of their past, what they need to recognize is that's just a threat. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything to you at all. It was Mm -hmm. just a threat. Well, also Mm -hmm. Dwayne realized that your past doesn't define your future. Mm -hmm. There you go. That was good, Bob. But he's also, yeah, once in a while. (laughs) But he's also, you know, when you love someone unconditionally, which I've never been loved unconditionally by a man. A halo. Oh, Halo. Yeah, Halo does. I mean, you know, pe- there are people in my life that do, um, but my husband, not unconditionally. Right. They don't, when you love unconditionally, it doesn't matter what that person does or says. You really do have a whole other level of love, right? And you found that in, in Dwayne. And that's a beautiful, beautiful um, moment. Um, thank you for sharing that. I'm in tears too. Uh I, I know the story and I'm still crying. <laughs> I, we've talked about it a million times uh, and I'm still crying. Um, tell me a little bit about, because this is one of the songs that comes on all the time in my car, is All Consuming Fire. That's the name of the song. All, consum- yeah. all Consuming yeah. Fire. I love it. And I think we have a clip of that as well. We're going to play for while you all explain what why that uh, song came to mind. You all Consuming song. Fire is, um, actually, I didn't write All Consuming Fire, um, but I was, it's one of the first songs that I knew I wanted to record because that's another song that I was praying. I was just in the house praying and I don't have, I don't even know who wrote that song. I have, we have, we when we recorded it, you know, you have to go through and get all the rights and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, we just, there's no information or anything like that out there. And it should be because it's the most amazing song ever. And I, God just really, he still, he, the same thing with me. He uses that song in my life all the time because God keeps speaking to me. I'm an all consuming by all consuming, all encompassing. I, I, I will consume all of your past, all of your fears about your future. I will consume that in myself if you'll just find yourself in me. I had to make sure that I wasn't going after a career or going after my dreams. I was going after him. I was just chasing him. And that's his all-consuming fire is the more I chased him, the more he, the more my purpose and my dreams began to come to fruition. It's really quite amazing. It's quite amazing. She's speechless. I am because I just had a vision of like when I first met you, you had on um, these boots. Do you remember that story? I got on my boots now. You do? I do. I'm sitting here and all you see is this, but I got my boots on because that's the anointing. 
Yeah, I, I'm not kidding when I say to you, we met at a hotel with everybody and I, I literally was like, it was just this like, um, just because I know, you know, everybody goes through pain. And um, I, I constantly say this, you know, if you can turn your pain into your purpose, then God yeah. can use it. He works all things together for his glory and he'll just really turn it around. And so, I, you know, you've done that and continue to do that and you're helping others do that too. Um, and, and I just can't thank you enough uh, for allowing me into your life and for sharing your story with so many people around the world. And there's so many things that you do in silence for others that um, only God knows, you know. Um, you really have a heart after God and for his people. And I see that and, um, I'm excited to see what he has for you and what, you know, he's going to do with your movie and your life. Um, I am blessed to be able to call you my friend. I love you. Because it's not, you know, I know you're the one of the people I can call in the middle of the night and say, Hey, I need you to pray. And you will, um, and have. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. Thank you. Cause I've done the same thing um, with you. You know, Corey, I, I want to, I just want to say this. So many people um, do have dreams and do have hurts. They have hurts and our hurts and our, our wounds um, make us negate our dreams and our visions. And he said, though, the vision, Terry, wait, wait for it. You know, how many times have I called you and said, I'm not cut out for this. I'm just, I'm just not cut out for this. And I have to keep remembering, don't chase the dream, chase him. As I chase him, the dream just keeps coming. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't ask for it. I, I never asked for it, even with the book. And uh, I, I never asked for the book. It just, it just, it just happened. And I, I, sometimes I sit there and I think how many people in the world they have so much in them, so much in them that the enemy wants to take from them. Mm -hmm. And really the good thing that, that the beautiful thing is, is that really the more you're scarred, the more you're hurt, the more of use you are to other people. Cause I get it. I get it. I don't have time to judge people. I don't have time to, to, I don't, I can't because I know what it feels like. Yeah. to be pushed down and to be pushed back. And, and I just, I think that's the biggest thing that people, they realize with me is they look at me and they go, wow, if she can do it, I we can, can yeah. too. Oh yeah. yeah. There's no doubt. Yeah. And, and I want to just reiterate it um, before I ask you two final questions. Uh, oh, I'm done. I'm putting it to the camera over here. Uh, this is the name of Sherry Dameron's book. Can you see that? Uh, it's a story of God's miraculous grace. And I highly recommend it. It's a great read and um, will be a movie at soon, some point very soon. So um, two final questions for you, my dear friend. By the way, I really love your earrings. For those that are watching on the Thank podcast, you. you can't see them, but they're gorgeous. Um, I like her necklace because I can see your whole house in your necklace. <laughs> Really? It's it's a mirror, yeah. And I'm looking at oh it. Gosh, I'm like, okay, that's cool. See, yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. And you can see the the puppy. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the first question is: define yourself in three words. You used to tell me this before you got me on nope, here. No, it's to off. Ask me it's, such a it's, question. It's, yeah. You're so cute. Yeah. Um, in three words. Well, it's more story. like what are three words that describe you? Oh, sorry. Well, there's a difference. That's Simply yeah, the best difference. would be three words to describe You are true. This is true. This is my dyslexia. Full force right now. Just switched everything around. So this, that would be describe three words in yourself. Okay. So uh, if, if I used three words to describe yes. me, I would say after his glory. Mm. Mm. That's I, what I meant. I that's mm. not three words to describe you. That's describe yourself in three words. But... But that's perfect because it is, it we've is. had a pastor say, you know what he said? Nobody else is, the pastors are doing this, which is pretty Ever. amazing. Pastor uh, Goodwin, Go Otuno. Goodwin Otuno said, child of God. Sorry, Godwin Otuno. Because. Godwin Otuno, sorry. Um, child of God. So in, in his glory, that's beautiful. That's three words and that's perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, Thank you. 
The last question is sort of silly, and I, you know, we apply it to every show, and it's been kind of fun. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Um, John Wayne. Oh, <laughs> that's right. a that's good a one. one. Yeah. Actually, you you got your real life John Wayne and Dwayne Dwayne Dameron, but that's a great one. John Wayne's a great one. Let me ask you: Does Dwayne have a Southern accent? Um, no, he lost that in Italy. I was going to say, does he speak Italian? He does speak some Italian, not not a lot, but he does. He loves Italian food. But um, um, I would love to hear the Italian uh, language in a Southern accent. He just, I, I grew he up Italian, and my, my whole family spoke Italian to me. I didn't have any idea what Buenos they were saying. Aires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now, he pretty much lost that. He sounds proper. Um, we, I tell him all the time that, that he's not of this place. He's not yeah. from here because he just lost it all. He's just – he's amazing. I'm telling he's you. He's a special, he's a special guy. Yeah. Um, and he just he, – he really is. Um yeah, he's amazing. Well, I thank you for sharing just a bit of your story today. It's been beautiful. I love you. And I I, I think you should leave our audience with um, your favorite scripture. For I know the plans that I have for you, says so, so, the plans of good and not of evil, to bring you to the expected end. And I, I mean, that's just really one of the things that I, the scriptures that I absolutely Hold on to. And by the way, that's Jeremiah 29, 11. Good job. It is. Jeremiah 29, 11. Because you know what? Yes, it that's is. my favorite, and that's my daughter's favorite. I'm going to put the So you know I didn't know that. Shots. Everybody knows you didn't look that up on Google. That was right out of your head. It is out of my head because that's literally, and this is why, and I'm not just saying this. I had no idea hmm. you were going to say this today. That's my favorite scripture, and it is my daughter's. So that's... that's this- because we're connected, that's why you you I have know. to play me in this. I know it's going to be wait. amazing. I'm going to have to work on your southern accent. No, I got this. No, no, <laughs> air tires. I got air tires. <laughs> no, you keep saying tires. You got to say air tires. Air tires. See me. Like air-mitars. think amateur. Amateurs. <laughs> Sherry Dameron, I love you, yeah. and I look forward to catching up with you later on today. I'll probably give you a ring. So, thank you for okay. coming on today you, and sharing Corey. your story and just all that you've been through. And you can reach Sherry at Sherry Dameron 7 on Instagram. Sherry Dameron Ministries. On Facebook. On Facebook. Uh, at SherryDameron.org. And SherryDameron.org. All on the org. screen in front of you. All on the screen in front of us. Right here. Yay, right here. <laughs> I love you, my friend. I love you. I love I'll you. you love you, Bob. Say hi to, um, to Dwayne and Sterling. I will do. Okay. And we're out. Love you. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver, and thank you for watching The Corey Ellis Effect. We hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Here are some more episodes you might enjoy. Hit the subscribe button below, and have a great day.